All right. Um, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, uh, verse 2 says, All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the clean, and to the unclean, to him that sacrificeth and to him that sacrificeth not. As is the good, so is the sinner. And he that sweareth as he that feareth an oath. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live, and after that they go to the dead. So what is it saying? Verse 3 says, There is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event even to all. Even unto all. Um, there is one event unto all. Um, the coronavirus is happening to the righteous and the unrighteous, to the godly and the ungodly. This is something that we're all facing. Um, all things come alike to all, verse 2. There's one event to the righteous and to the wicked, and that's what we're all facing right now. So this is something that's happening to all of us, that all of us are having to deal with, all of us are having to go through. And, you know, some people think that when a sickness comes or something happens, it's because you did wrong. A lot of Christians think that it's because I did wrong, because I sinned, and, you know... That could be the case. I'm not saying it's not because there's instances of that. Uh, a lot of the afflictions King David went through was because he was in sin. He said so himself as you read through some of the Psalms that he wrote. Um, but more often than not, that's not the case. When you look at just the Bible, Bible examples of it, that is most often not the case. Everything that happened to Job was not because he was ungodly. He was a perfect man in all his generation. I mean, he was the most godly man there was at the time uh, based on what how I read the book of Job, and yet all these things befell him. So people can tend to get into that mindset, especially within the charismatic movement. You know, you've got the demon of this sickness is what they think. And that's just not how it is. I mean, people get sick all the time, and it's not because you have a lack of faith either that you got sick. Um, it happens. So we just need to understand that if someone gets sick, and even if someone dies, it's not because they were um, they sinned in some specific way. Although it could be, okay? I'm not saying that it's not. There is a sin unto death. But for the most part, that is not the case. That's not what we see God doing most of the time throughout the Bible. I mean, we're in a sin-filled world. Now, they did die because they're a sinner, because the wages of sin is death. As it is appointed unto man once to die, so death is going to happen because of sin. But I'm saying that just because you get a sickness, just because something bad happens in your life, just because maybe there's even a miscarriage, it doesn't mean it's because you're a sinner, because you've done something wrong. We see right here, all things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the clean, and to the unclean. To him that sacrificeth, to him that sacrificeth, sacrificeth not, as is the good, so is the sinner. So the same thing happens to all people. So like I'm sure like godly people have died from the coronavirus already, and ungodly people have died from the coronavirus. And it's one event happens to all. And it could be anything. It doesn't have to be an earthquake happens and people some people die some people live um, but it's not because they did something wrong necessarily now again I'm not God I can't say in every single case that someone didn't die because they sinned against God because that can and does happen but most of the time that's not the case because we don't see that throughout the Bible there's very few instances of something like that happening so I'm not ruling that out but I do want to say that bad things happen and it happens to all of us okay when something like that happens, something, whatever the event is. Okay, there's one event to the righteous and to the wicked, the Bible says. So, I just want to give us an update on some of the, the facts concerning the coronavirus. This was as much as I could find. I spent probably, I don't know, like an hour, hour and a half yesterday looking into this, um, trying to find different things, different stats. So, this is as of January 30th, 2020. All of these are going to be 2020, but this is January 30th. I have the, the link here if you want it. I'm not going to read it. I might just say it's from statnews.com. But the link I have right here, if you want to go find it yourself, you can look at it, okay? Um, so as of January 30th, the total Chinese mainland cases, because that's what they were doing, January 30th. Um, again, if you read the article, it said that it's not that the Chinese are trying to withhold statistics at the date this was written on January 30th. But they're saying it was hard to keep statistics because it was happening so fast. So they were doing the best they could to keep statistics. This is what they gave. I believe the article said the World Health Organization at the time. And it, I think the timing of that was December 30th, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but here's what, what it said as what was said as of January 30th of this year. 
The total Chinese mainland cases was 7,700. The total Chinese deaths up to that point, yeah, it was December 31st. Up to December 31st is what these stats are for. So the total number of cases was 7,700 in the mainland China, and the total number of deaths was 170. That's a death rate of 2.2%. Okay, if, if you catch it, you have a 2.2% chance of dying. Now, this is as of March 6th from WSOCTV.com. Okay, total worldwide cases. This was just this month. What's today? The 22nd, right? All right, so that's, what, 16 days ago? All right, just 16 days ago, March 6th, two weeks ago. Total worldwide cases was 97,850. Total deaths worldwide, 3,383. That's a death rate of 3.5%. So that's already increased over 1% from what was in China mainland, okay? 3.5% death rate. Now, five days later, March 11th, total worldwide cases, 11 days ago, 118,000 total deaths worldwide, 4,300. That's a death rate of 3.6%. It went up 0.1%. Okay, March 21st, this is the most up-to-date statistics I could find. The website is uh, health.com, or I'm sorry, world, uh, worldometers.info slash coronavirus. And this thing keeps a, just an ongoing tally. So when I wrote these down, I went back like 30 minutes later and looked at it and the numbers had already gone up slightly because it's trying to keep an up-to-date tally, just um, a live tally. But this was as of about 9.30 last night, March 21st. Okay, total worldwide cases. So from March 11th to March 21st, 10 days. March 11th, total worldwide cases, 118,000. Uh, March 21st, total worldwide cases, 307,725. All right, so it's almost, you know, that's times two. That's a 200% increase in just 10 days. All right, total deaths worldwide, 10 days ago, it was 4,300. As of yesterday, there was 13,054. Okay, now, that's a death rate of 4.2%. So it went up a little over half a percent. Okay, so it, based on the world statistics... If you were to catch coronavirus, you have a 95.8% chance of survival, or you have a 4.2% chance of death. Now, I didn't go further into the statistics to look at the age groups that are dying, because if you're like where most of our congregation is, you're young, it's almost like nil. You're not, like none of us are really in that danger range. Um, it's mostly happening to the elderly and I didn't look up those statistics. I just wanted to give us a general understanding of, of what the death rate is, okay? It's 4.2%. Now, I did this on purpose because a lot of people have been comparing it to the flu, and I did that. And I said, well, let me actually look at the numbers and see what's going on. So, these are flu deaths, and this is from taken from uh, health.com. Again, the link is here if you want it. So in the 2017-2018 season in the U.S., there was uh, 61,000 deaths from the flu. Is that right? Yeah, 61,000 deaths. Um, let me write that down to make sure. Sorry, I was looking at a bunch of numbers last night. Um, so in the 2017-2018 season, in the United States only, this is from the CDC, you can read the article if you want, there was 61,000 deaths from the flu. Okay, in 2018-2019 season, so just last year, okay, in the U.S., there was 34,200 deaths, okay, from the flu. This year, from October 1st of 2019 to February 1st of 2020, that's, the season isn't over yet, so they can't give all the statistics, um, there have been, um, the, the CDC has estimated the number of U.S. cases so far. They don't know. This is their estimation of the number of cases of the flu so far from October 1st to February 1st. There's 31 million estimated cases of the flu in the United States so far this flu season. Now, there's an estimated 12,000 to 30,000 deaths from the flu so far this season? 12,000 to 30,000. I went with the 30,000 figure, the higher figure, and I just wanna tell you, cause I didn't understand why is so much of the, the panic from the coronavirus? Why is there so much panic over this thing? 
like it's not making sense to me because when you look at the flu, we have the flu every year and like a lot of people die from the flu every single year, obviously. Just in the United States, I wasn't looking worldwide, I was just looking in the United States and these numbers are from the CDC, the Center for Disease Control. Um, that's where I got them from, at least the article is quoting that. So with the 31 million estimated cases so far in the US and 12 to 30,000 have died so far, I went with the 30,000 number and that's a 0.1% death rate. 0.1%. Versus a 4.2% so far for the coronavirus. And that's why people are so worried about it. Because that's a big, that's almost nothing. That's like times 4,000. 4,000 times what's dying. If you compare numbers to numbers, if all things are equal. That's why it's like a, I don't know, someone figured out, is it like a 4,000% increase? Right, I thought so. 4,000.1 percent increase or 0.2 percent increase 4,000 that's why people are so worried about it and as I started looking at this stuff I didn't decide to change services until this morning I mean I was praying about it last night I'm praying about it this morning I've been praying about it but I didn't really uh, I think they're overreacting I still do to some degree think they're overreacting in some instances but with a 4,000 percent increase in the death rate I think it's it's prudent we've talked about prudence to just be cautious and so that's what we're doing that's why you know if if you're comfortable shaking someone's hand go for it i don't have a problem like do what you want um it, it really doesn't bother me but you know that's why we're taking the precautions we are i meant to mention this wednesday but we went through and like disinfected everything we wiped everything down here and you know my family will be doing that every sunday after the service we'll just go through and hit all the handles everything everyone touches every Sunday after the service until this thing like abates. But we're gonna be doing that. As long as we can keep the supplies to be able to do it, we're gonna keep doing that. We were able to score some Clorox wipes at, at Costco. So we're gonna hold, hold on to those. I'm not gonna leave them here because then I, people will be going crazy and Clorox wiping everything and then we won't have any. Um, so just we'll just have my family's gonna do that, but we'll wipe everything down that everyone touches on a regular basis. Um, just to help with the spread of these things. And again, just to remind you, please wash your hands, um, all those types of things. Um, you know, just common sense stuff, but let's just do it more often um, than we have been and just keep an eye out for each other. And um, let me see if I can read. All right, let me just finish reading this here for you. Okay, the CDC also estimates that up to 31 million Americans have caught the flu this season. I already mentioned that. With Get this, with 210 to 370,000 flu sufferers hospitalized because of the virus. Okay, so of those 31 million, 210 to 370,000 flu sufferers are hospitalized because they got the flu. Now, um, what I did is I got the 12,000 and the 30,000 number of their estimate, and I went right in the middle, and that's 21,000. Okay, so I just said, let's say there's, it's in the middle, there's 21,000 deaths from the flu so far based on the, the 31 million. But what I did is I compared that to the three, let's, I just went with the higher number and say there's 370,000 flu sufferers hospitalized because of the virus. And I, I compared those numbers, the 21,000 deaths with the 370,000 flu sufferers, and I got the death rate for that. And based on those that are hospitalized, it's a 5.7% death rate. Okay, if you're hospitalized for the flu, there's a 5.7% chance you're going to die. I did not do the same thing with the coronavirus. Um, I think there's a bunch of cases that aren't even known about because the CDC is an estimate just based on past. And it's not like all these people are getting tested for the flu or something. Okay, they're just guesstimating that it's 31 million. Okay, and the numbers I gave you for the coronavirus are only those people that have been tested. Okay, it's, it doesn't include all the people we don't know about. Okay, there's, it's probably twice these numbers. So really, the actual number of the death rate is probably closer to like 2.5%, but I'm just going with the actual numbers that we know. So I'm just giving you these facts. It, it, even if it's 2.5%, that's still, uh, you know, 2,500% increase or 
greater chance over the flu. Okay, so that's why all the, the scare that, that we saw, and I, I think could have been handled different, but hindsight's always twenty twenty. So um, I just wanted to share some of that information with us and give you some of my reasoning as to why we're, you know, cutting back services and, and whatnot. And again, this can change. We may cancel services completely. I will let you know. So just pray that the Lord gives me wisdom and uh, we're able to uh, just keep following him and going forward in faith and just trusting God. Because, you know, here's the, the problem I have with canceling services is what if this thing goes on for 18 months we're just not gonna have church I'm like no I'm not we have a mandate from God like do we have faith at all so I'm not opposed to canceling it for a short period of time but then what, what what's that gonna do to us spiritually when more than anything we need God we need the Word of God so should we just cancel it indefinitely then and just we don't need church I mean, I don't think that's an option for us. God never gives us that option here. The only time services really got canceled in the Bible is when they were taken into captivity, okay? When they were facing, you know, their enemies at the gates. And then obviously you have to do something about it. So I don't think we uh, should. We may limit them. It may be to once a month or something, but I don't know. We'll have to cross that bridge when we get there and figure out what we're going to do and how we can do it and still assemble together because that's absolutely, you know, necessary for us. It's, it's commanded us that we assemble, but, you know, God doesn't say how exactly and how often. Um, I do think we definitely have, the Bible shows us that they assembled the first day of the month, of the week. Um, so Sundays, that's why we meet on Sundays. Um, so I just want to, you know, kind of help us through this and, Help us to understand that even if we do cancel services, it'll be for a short period of time. And we're just going to have to have faith that, you know, God will help us and we'll take precautions coming in. And we may sit farther apart or just sit with your family because obviously you live in the same house. Um, but again, if you're sick, please don't come. If you end up finding out you have coronavirus, let us all know because then we probably need to quarantine ourselves so we don't infect other people. If, if we have a chance of getting it and those types of things. But... Um, you know, let's just go forward in faith, just trusting God. You know, faith is the victory, but thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we just need to have faith. And I'm not talking about foolishness. I'm talking about trusting God and not being fearful. And that's the message I'm going to even be preaching this morning. But I do also want to take this time to teach us. You know, someone could say, well, why don't you live stream it? We could, but we're not going to because that's not church. That's not church. And I am disheartened by the amount of nonsense I see on social media over what churches are doing and calling it a church service. I have zero problem with people canceling their services and putting preaching online for their people to still listen to and still be fed. I have no problem with that. That's one of the benefits of technology. But calling it church and treating it like it's church is false. It's wrong. They don't even understand what the word church means because it's a called out assembly. You can't assemble online, I'm sorry. You're either assembled with us right now and if you're not here, guess what? You're not assembled with us. You're not part of this assembly. You're not with us. This is the church. We are the church when we assemble together. That's where the church is. That's where it's at. Whether it's in this building, whether we go to the parking lot, doesn't matter. When we assemble, then that's the church. But anything outside of assembling together is not church. And I see so many preachers putting this stuff up. Like, let me just read something to you. Like, this is, I've seen preachers putting this stuff up. Okay? How to attend church online. And attend is in all caps. Get out of bed and get dressed. It'll put you in the right mindset to worship. Go through your normal Sunday routine. Minus the hurry up, we're running late part. Gather your family together. No multitasking. Worship is a family activity. Project the feet on your largest screen. It'll feel more like you're there, in quotes. Sorry, let me... All right. 
Sing along loud and proud. Yes, it feels weird. It feels weird for the people who are leading worship in an empty room too. Lean into the message. Say amen, clap, shout, and have a time of prayer at the end. Make your home a sanctuary. How to attend church online. <laughs> How to be unfaithful to the assembly. That's what you just told them. That's not church. Look up the word. But I, I've told you all before, bad doctrine leads to bad practices. And that's all this is. This is a lack of, of understanding doctrine. And not just on behalf of, of the sheep within the flock, but the shepherds that are supposed to be leading the flock. That's where the greatest danger is. 2 Timothy 4.1 says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a solemn charge from God. Okay, this is a commission from God who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. He says, I'm reminding you, this charge is from heaven. It's from God and God's going to judge the quick and the dead. God will judge you based on what you do. And here's what he says, preach the word. Not what you think it is, not what you want it to say, but preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Here it is. It says to preach the word with all long suffering and doctrine. Doctrine. That's what's not happening. Doctrine is not being preached. Feel good messages are being preached. Self help messages are being preached. How to be a better you is being preached, but doctrine is not being preached. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. He's talking to a preacher who goes into true churches. He says, this is what's going to happen. The time's going to come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And it's not the time's going to come. The time has come. The message Brother Potter preached at our camp meeting, the time has come when they will not endure sound doctrine. That's where we're at, and that's what we see in front of us now, that preachers don't even understand. And these guys are, 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 are trapped. They're in a, a, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. They say that they hold to local church doctrine only, but their practice is something completely different because they've not separated from those that have a universal mindset. So they have this same practice. They say, we're local church only, but their practice is something completely different because they don't truly hold to this doctrine. They don't even understand it. They're, it's confusion. They're messed up in their mind. They don't properly understand doctrine. And because of that, they will how to attend church online. And if you ask any of these preachers that I've seen, if I were to ask them, do you believe in you know, the local church, local visible body only? Oh, yeah. I'm like, then what's this nonsense? Church online. How can you do that? Please help me. How did you all assemble? Who was there? Please tell me. How was the fellowship afterwards? Did you put a smiley face? What? I'm serious. This is not... I'm being sarcastic to get a point across. That's not church. You can't assemble like that. Amen. Then none of us need to be here. Let's just live stream it. I don't, we don't even need a building. What are we trying to get a building where we can assemble together at? We can just all stay in our homes and we'll meet at 10 and we'll have our, our online fellowship. And I can preach behind a desk. I'll just put a shirt and tie on in my pajamas. And just preach a little ditty. And, and, and Brother Brad can, you know, sing a couple songs. Lead us in, in singing. And we can lean into the preaching and say amen and clap our hands. But how would we know? How do you know if someone's hurting? How do you know if someone has some, some praise, some blessing to share? Amen. Some burden they're bearing. How do you know that? online. You don't. This is why we need to assemble. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and prayers. Amen. You can't do that online. It's not church. And I want our people to understand that. I want us to know, and I think we do know, but because it's in front of us right now, because we're seeing the plethora of it, I want to make a point of that, that we know that that is not church. That is foolishness. Now, let me back up and clarify. I don't think it's foolishness 
if they canceled their services and they're offering preaching online for their people to still be fed. I don't think that is foolishness. I think what is foolishness and what I called foolishness is calling it church because it's not. A church is a called out assembly. Assembly, that means you have to assemble together like we are right now. That's church when you assemble together. Not singing and preaching online. That's not church. You're not assembled together. So we have to, to grasp that and recognize that those that are doing that, they're wrong. It's false doctrine. And how sad that the preachers are the ones leading in this thing. Right. How sad that that's the case. And I just don't want that for us. I want us to know the difference. I want us to understand sound doctrine, but that makes us weird. I'm just telling you right now. That puts a mark on us. It, it, it has marked our churches <laughs> as out there. See, just believing the Bible puts you out there. So I just want to encourage us to just keep following the Lord. Keep trusting the Word of God. Keep following what the Bible says. Walk in light. But behind all of that, it needs to be because we're seeking God. Because I want to know God. Because I desire God. That's why we do this. That's why we assemble. Is because we desire God. I want to be close to God. I want to be in Him. That's why I'm here. Because I'm in Him. I'm part of His body. I am in Him. You are in Him when you're added to this body. And that's what we need. So much the more. Not so much the less. So we need this. It's important for us. It's important for our spiritual health. 